Hey guys, Chris here at CaribbeanPod.com. I hope you guys are enjoying the recipes. Show me some appreciation, some love. Give me the thumbs up to this video just below here. Above, you're going to see the subscribe link. Click on it if you haven't already done so. It's the only way for me to get the new videos out to you as soon as they get published. Today we're going to be making pastels, one of those classic Caribbean favorites when it comes around Christmas time. My recipe is going to be a little bit different than what you're going to be finding elsewhere on the internet. But trust me, this one will hit home. It's going to be delicious. People are going to be asking you for this year in, year out, people. Stay tuned. Chris here at CaribbeanPod.com. Let's make some pastels. Let's quickly run through the ingredients for the filling of the pastel. We're going to start off with the meat. Today I'm using a combination of beef, pork, and veal. They're all grounded and it turns out to be about a pound and a half of that. Um, traditionally beef is alone is used or pork alone or in some cases chicken. But today I'm going to use the combination of the beef, veal, and pork just for that sort of roundness as well as the texture I get from using the three different types of meats. We're gonna need some fresh ground black pepper, maybe about a half a teaspoon capers. I've got here maybe about three tablespoons of capers, a couple onions. In here I've got some ketchup, and this is about maybe about a quarter cup of ketchup. You can also use um, tomato sauce, but I love the sweetness as well as the sort of tanginess from the ketchup. Olives, I've got here a few olives. It's going to turn out to be about a couple tablespoons when it's all chopped up. As far as herbs and seasoning goes, you can add pretty much whatever you like. In my case here, I've got some uh, fresh thyme. It's going to turn out to be about a tablespoon, a tablespoon and a half of fresh thyme. Some celery leaf, I'm going to chop all that up. A couple scallions, chive works great, parsley works great. If you can source shadow benny, please, you do your thing. Um, Spanish thyme, whatever sort of herbs you like, feel free to use it in here. I've got three cloves of garlic that I'm going to chop up as well. Um, some seasoning pepper, also known as pimento peppers. I'm going to use that as well. We're going to need some salt. Um, Maybe about half a teaspoon or so of salt, some Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire, however you pronounce it. You know what I'm talking about, people. Maybe about a tablespoon of that. And um, as I go along, if I've missed any of the ingredients here, what I'm going to do is tell you later on in the video. But this is it to start with, guys. In a large nonstick pan, I've got all the meat, the grounded meat in there that I'm going to cook down and pretty much cook all the way through. Now remember you want to break it up as it cooks so you want that sort of grainy texture. You want to make sure there's no huge lumps in there. The other thing I'm going to do while this cooks down over here I'm just going to chop up the, the scallions and the onions and everything else get it all chopped up. We're going to have to chop up the capers as well as well as the olives. I'm just going to chop all that up and remember guys we're going to try and get the the onion and everything else nice and fine. Uh, we don't want big pieces in this. We want everything to be uniform in size when we chop it up. And what I forgot to mention earlier, can't be from the Caribbean, well for me anyways, without some good scotch bonnet or habanero pepper. I'm probably going to use about half of this, no seeds, because I really don't want the heat from the pepper. I just want the flavor from it. The whole idea here is to let everything marry and create one big bursting a goodness of flavor. The ground meat is all cooked down now and what I had done I used lean ground meat so the the, um, the pork, the beef as well as the veal was lean so there wasn't any um, residual fat well in the bottom of the pan. Now if you do have residual fat at the bottom of the pan spoon it out because I mean I say you don't want to have all that fat going into your system to try and be a little bit healthy right so what I didn't do and the other thing is I wanted to mention I use a non-stick pan here um, for browning the meat simply because I didn't want to add any oil to it I've gone ahead and I've broken it up there's no more chunks or anything so up now I'm gonna add all those the onion that I diced up as well as all of the the, the herbs as well as the garlic in there so the thyme, the celery, whatever herbs that you're using, 
feel free to dump it in there as well as the garlic and we're gonna allow this to cook down now I'm gonna stir it up give it a good stir and allow that to cook for about four or five minutes on a very low heat just to allow everything to soften up and release all its um, beautiful flavors it's been cooking now after I've added the onions and all those herbs uh, for about four or five minutes now all I'm gonna do now is add the other ingredients so I've got the peppers the olives the capers which I've also chopped up the black pepper and I'm just going to continue adding the black pepper here because we need a fair amount of black pepper in this. The salt. The Liam Perrin's Wooster sauce. And the ketchup. I'm just going to give everything a good stir. I'm going to add some more black pepper to this. Give it a stir and allow it to cook down for another four minutes or so. So it's been cooking now after I've added all of the ingredients in here for about five, four or five minutes. Everything is, is nice and, and combined now. What I'm going to do guys is turn the heat off, put the lid on this and allow this to cool all the way down. Um, maybe half an hour, an hour, maybe closer to an hour. Just for it to cool all the way down before we get to the next step in making the pastel. Next up we'll be making the sort of outer layer for the pastels. Um, sort of a dough we're making here and in this bowl here I've got two cups of cornmeal very fine cornmeal and to that we're gonna add three cups of very hot water um, to help make it into a dough additionally we'll also add about one and a quarter teaspoon of salt as well as about four tablespoons of vegetable oil just to make a nice soft dough so I'm gonna go ahead and make that dough and then I'm gonna show you the end result when I'm all done Guys, the cornmeal I got wasn't working the way as it normally does in the one I usually get down in the Caribbean. So it seems this version I have here, the only way to get it to go into that sort of doughy consistency that I'm looking for is to cook it. So on a low heat here with the three cups of water, I'm just going to keep stirring until I get that sort of doughy consistency that I'm looking for. It looks pretty much like polenta at this point. But guys, I gotta work with what I've got, and this is what I've got at this point as far as the cornmeal goes. So I've got no choice at this point. I have it all, well, I have no choice but to cook it a bit just for it to go into that sort of thick consistency like a dough that I'm looking for. Now, this is very hot. I'm just gonna allow it to cool, and then we'll get to the other step. What I've gone ahead and done, and I have it on the plastic wrap right now, is I've rolled out those dough balls into 12 uh, even sized dough balls the main um, dough we created from the cornmeal and um, I've, I'm just putting this plastic wrap over it so it doesn't dry out you can always use a damp paper towel or damp tea cloth over that as well and to the left of that I have here the banana leaves yes we'll be using banana leaves and I've cut these up into sections that um, we're going to be using to wrap everything in. If you can't get banana leaves, feel free to use tin foil, but traditionally it's done in banana leaves. It gives it that wonderful flavor. I've cleaned them out. Now I've purchased these at the Asian grocery store here, and it's found in the um, frozen section. If you can't get it, feel free to use tin foil, as I said. If you're getting fresh banana leaves, what you may want to do is to make it pliable. Since this was frozen, you can see I can bend it any which way I want and it will not rip. With freshly harvested banana leaves, it will rip, it will bust, it will tear on you. So what you want to do is over an open flame, not too close to the flame, just above it, pass the leaves gently on there, um, sort of like this over a, a gentle flame, and it will become pliable for you. Then you want to wipe it down with a clean cloth. And what we're going to do next, guys, is assemble everything now and get it ready for steaming or boiling. Let's quickly run through the steps for filling one of these pastels. And what I did was I have some oil in the pan here with, uh, with a brush. 
I just brushed the banana leaf a bit with um, with that oil and then we're just going to press down from the center keep working your way out until you form a nice big round circle what I've done now is put a nice big heap in maybe a tablespoon and a half of that filling the filling that we made earlier is nice and cool now onto there and in with using the leaf I just folded it over and give it a gentle press on there until you have a sort of a package then you're gonna do the same thing on this side as well and the other side the whole idea is to enclose everything. Give it a good press and we pretty much have one wrapped up there. All we're going to do now is actually wrap it. So I'm thinking we go this way first, tuck it in, then we flip it over like so. Bring this over bring the other side over and we have a, a very tight package here. All I'm going to do is using some string I'm just going to tie it all up nice and tight. So you notice what I did I just went like this went across flip it over and now I'm just going to tie it into a bundle. I'm just going to show you guys my makeshift steamer that I have here and all it is in a very wide pot here I don't own a steamer so in a very wide pot I have maybe about two centimeters of water I have a draining sort of wire mesh basket that um, I use for draining stuff and all I'm gonna do now is place the water is at a sort of a rolling boil in there we want it at a sort of a simmer so just we're gonna steam this for about 20 minutes and we're just gonna line make sure this, that the water is not touching the well I guess it really doesn't matter because you can boil these as well but for better results, I think steaming is the way to go. I'm just going to stack these up in here. I may have to do about six at a time just not to overcrowd it. Actually, I've got about seven here. I'm probably going to move them around as they steam. And pretty much all I do next, put the lid on it and allow that to steam for about 20 minutes or so. I had the pastel steaming for about 25 minutes now guys and there it is it's all done I'm just gonna allow it to cool now before I open them up and show you guys what they look like inside but these are the pastels enjoy and these are the finished pastels here guys um what I've gone I've gone ahead and I've cut through one and I'm telling you guys this thing is so tasty it's not even funny missing some chow chow and maybe a little hot sauce on the side, but guys, this is the pastel Chris here, CaribbeanPot.com. I hope you guys give this recipe a try. I mean to say, we did run into a little problem with the uh, the cornmeal and making the dough, but as you saw, we kind of improvised, cooked it a little, became nice and firm. But in the comments section below, I'll mention to you guys the name of uh, the brand name of a uh, recommended cornmeal to use. I asked you guys on um. I asked you guys on on Facebook, I think it was, what's the best brand to use. So look in the comment section below and you guys will see that. The name of the brand of cornmeal to look for so you didn't run into the same sort of problems that I did as far as the uh, the dough is concerned. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com guys. Thank you for joining me in the kitchen today. Remember to hit subscribe above and leave me your comments below. Take care guys.